Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you a quick way to decode and analyze malware scripts without having to perform a whole lot of manual analysis. And we'll be doing that by allowing the malware to run and monitoring any output using the proc monitor. So I've already downloaded a Pikabot loader script from Malwarebazaar, and I've created a copy here so that I can preserve, preserve the original file name. Now if I go over to that file and open it in the text editor, you can see that the code just looks pretty complicated and it looks like crap. If we scroll through the code enough, we can begin to see these obfuscated arrays, text values, and occasionally these obfuscated strings. Now we could go ahead and try to analyze that and decode that manually, but that's for really, really long scripts like this, that's quite a painful process. So a much better way to deal with it is to use a tool like Procmon, which allows us to analyze, which allows us to hone in on specific processes and see what they're doing. So I've gone ahead and opened up Procmon. And what I'm gonna do is instead of analyzing the script manually, I'm actually gonna double click it and allow it to run. Uh, keeping in mind that this is in a virtual machine and not on. So I've got the file here. What I'm going to do is just double click it and just let it run for a few seconds. And if we do that, we can see we get an alert that says there was a problem starting, blah, 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 this.dll. So just going off that, we can tell that the script is trying to load some kind of DLL file. But for some reason, it wasn't able to find it. Now it's possible that that's a fake error message, but we can dive in a little bit deeper and find out for sure. So now that the malware has run and the Procmon was running while it was doing that, we can go ahead and stop the capture. And we can go tools, process tree. And that lets us see any process that was running during that period. So if we scroll, scroll down to the bottom, we can see where the W script has executed our Pikabot script. And we can also see that W script has run cmd.exe with this big long command. It's run ping, it's run curl, and it's attempted to run run dll32. So one thing we can do is we can click that and say add process and children to include filter. And what that does is it limits the procmon output to only the processes that we're interested in and that are related to the malware. Now this still gives us 17,000 lines of output, which isn't very nice. So what I'm going to do is go back to that process tree, go to that cmd.exe execution. And in this little box here, I can see the full command that was executed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste that into a text editor so I can see what's going on. And now that the full command is in the text editor, we can see that it's run cmd.exe. It's attempted to echo some value. It's run ping. And then it's run curl to try and download a file. Now, curl is a built in tool that allows you to download files from the internet. It's a tool that's built into all Windows installs by default. Now, going ahead and adding some new lines, we can see that curl has attempted to download a file from this IP address. It's also attempted to go from this IP address. And it's also attempted this one here. Now, I don't actually know what happens when you put that many, when you try and put three URLs in one command, but we can tell from here that it's trying to download something from one of these. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that it's got the dash O parameter, which specifies where to download the result to. And we can see that it's tried to save a DLL, with the same name that we saw before in that run DLL32 alert. Scroll down a little bit more, we can see it's attempted to run ping, and then it's attempted to use run DLL32 to execute that same file that it just downloaded. Now, since this file is running in a virtual machine, it doesn't have networking enabled. Um, 
I would assume that it's failed to download this and it's hence failed to execute it. And that would be the reason for the error message before. So it's likely that was a real error. error. That was a real error message. So anyways, yeah. Um, now we've extracted three URLs and IP addresses related to the malware. And we can say with pretty high confidence that it's just a downloader. It's attempting to download from one of these addresses, create a DLL file, and then just run it doing run it using run DLL 32. And using that, we save the very painful process of trying to analyze what is 1,218 lines of code. 